Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do a really quick video on brands that I support and don't support in beauty. And let's get straight into it. So the first one that I support, and I'm just reading off my notes, so just uh, bear with me, is Lush. Now, I have just been employed with Lush as a store manager. So that's really exciting for me. Um, and Lush are just amazing. I mean, from an ethical standpoint, uh, for all the charity work that they do, um, the fair trade ingredients, the quality of the products, it's all absolutely spot on. Um, and what more could you want from a brand? It's absolutely amazing. I mean, just recently they've um, gotten rid of egg in all their products. They're using aquafaba, which is a chickpea um, sort of mixture. It's the water from the chickpeas that have been soaked so it's sort of like um, they whip it up and it, it acts like eggs like an egg white in cooking as well um, so Lush continue to give customers what they want um, and also do it in a very ethical way so congrats to Lush and my second one is Essence and they're a German brand and they are probably one of the cheapest cosmetic companies on the market that doesn't test on animals uh, because Essence is a German brand and they do not sell in China um, they do not test on animals and the EU is very strict on animal testing as well. Um, so yeah, good job Essence. Um, and they're so cheap. I mean, if you're in Australia, I mean, you know, prices are like, they start at $2. You can get an eyeshadow single for about $2. It's insane. My next brand that I support is Pat McGrath. Now Pat McGrath, for those of you who don't know, is a very famous British makeup artist and she has worked with a lot of very high profile celebrities and clients. Um, she has a very expensive makeup line. It starts um, starts at, you know, at about $50, I think, for a, a lip gloss or a lipstick. Um, it's quite expensive. I mean, her biggest palettes, uh, the 10 pan palettes or 12 pan, I can't remember if they're 10 or 12, uh, retail for $190 Australian. So very expensive but the quality is absolutely amazing and all her products are made I believe most of them are made in Italy um, once again EU rules they must follow um, no animal testing laws and things like that um, so that's really amazing and yeah the quality of every Pat McGrath product I've bought is has been sensational I've got two of the palettes and I've got the lip fetish lip balm in clear absolutely wonderful the two palettes i've got the subliminal five i believe um which is the most recent one in the larger palette and then in the smaller ones i've got the subliminal bronze which has got like a white sort of um lady on the front like a sort of like a mythical figure sort of like a geisha i guess i don't know let me know in the comments what you think she is because she's sort of like a you know cool lady i like her <laughs> Uh, the I've got two more in the support now my, the second one I support is RCMA and it's the research council for makeup artists they've been around for a long time they've been around since 1952 I believe or 56 like quite a long time they cut you know they're they're definitely mainstayers in the game they're coming up to 70 years of being in the makeup industry and their products used to be primarily um, for the sort of the film industry and people who needed to do very um, high coverage looks and not have that weight on their face as well um, and to be able to get that colour on the face and for it to stay on the face quite well. Um, and RCMA do that fantastically. Their foundation palettes and pots are absolutely amazing. They're a cream foundation, but um, they become quite how do I say that they're a little bit oily on the face but in a nice way um, they're just sensational products um, you only need the tiniest bit to cover acne uh, acne scarring you can probably tell by my face I've got quite a bit of acne scarring and active acne as well um, I don't need concealer when I wear this I only use concealer under my eyes when I wear it it covers redness amazingly I highly recommend getting yourself a tester palette um, just does the job fantastically couldn't recommend anything else 
And the last one is just a store in general that I really support as well, much like Lush, is Mecca. Now, Mecca are an Australian beauty store. They're very similar to Sephora. They have a lot of exclusive um, rights to brands and things in Australia. Uh, absolutely amazing. Just the customer service is exceptional. Uh, the enthusiasm from the employees is exceptional and the range of products they sell is fantastic. Um, much prefer to go into one of their stores than a Sephora store. I feel Sephora stores is um, the difference is that a lot of them don't have as much sort of expertise on products. I feel a lot of them are just pushing products down your throat because Sephora told them to promote a product. Um, so I much prefer going to Mecca and even uh, the, the difference between a Mecca and a Mecca Maxima store. So a Mecca Maxima store has, is a much larger store, has a lot bigger range um, but the regular Mecca stores are much more niche and smaller stores and they stock some of the key brands like NARS and Diptyque and things like that so yeah I'd recommend if you are in Australia or New Zealand and you haven't been to Mecca before I would highly recommend uh, the experience it's great now brands that I don't support now before I continue I just want to reiterate that um, you know it's completely up to you um, as a consumer to make your own decisions about who you don't support um, this is just my personal opinion on these brands I know a lot of people love the brands I'm going to mention uh, but yeah just bear that in mind when I do say the brands so the first one is Jeffree Star and I'm going to include other beauty guru brands as a whole I have done a video on why I don't support them um, as a whole. I've already done a video on that. that that'll be a few videos back. Um, and yeah, I just, I feel like, just to summarize, I just feel that the cost and the price doesn't uh, equate to the quality. Um, I don't feel that some of these brands should be charging high end prices for their products um, when the quality is, you know, mid range. So, um, and other things such as, you know, I don't want to be supporting people who are problematic. I'm not saying Jeffree Star is problematic. He's not my favorite person on earth, but, um, you know, Manny MUA, Laura Lee, and a few others have proven themselves to be problematic in the beauty community. Um, so there is that as well. Now, the next one is Mac. Pretty obvious uh, why I'm going to say Mac. Uh, definitely the animal testing is a big no-no. Uh, I have made it my mission this year not to support animal testing brands um, or brands that do animal tests, should I say. Um, and secondly, Mac customer service is horrible. I have only had a couple of nice experiences at a Mac store. I find a lot of the time that they are grossly unstaffed um, and they're working on clients and don't really want to be serving customers while they're working on clients, which it is fair enough, but I've actually been into stores as well, flagship stores, not even, you know, within um, a department store. Um, and they've literally just looked at me up and down, stared at me because I haven't had any makeup on. I don't wear a lot of makeup. I don't wear it every day. I don't feel like I need to wear it every day. Um, just, yeah, um, customer service has been bad and there's been so many stories on the internet. I mean, all you'd have to do is just search my experience with Mac or working at Mac and I mean the story there's too many stories for it to not be true uh, and third one is Too Faced so Jared Blandino is not the nicest person on earth uh, from what has been said and what things have come out in regards to that um, he's done a lot of things that have been very problematic in the beauty community. Um, he has dismissed people who, you know, have a prominent following in the beauty community. Um, and they continue to release makeup that is like children's makeup. And I used to love Too Faced. I used to buy Too Faced all the time. Um, but I got over the childish packaging, packaging very quickly. The quality of the products do not improve. Um, if anything, Too Faced products are going downhill, in my opinion, uh, in the formulation and the way they're doing things. I mean, the 20th year anniversary um, eyeshadow palette was such a miss. 
Uh, and the lipsticks, what were they thinking? I mean, so chunky, full of glitter. I mean, obviously there is a demographic and a market for that, but yeah, big, big miss for me, definitely. <laughs> And the last one is OXX Cosmetics. Now, if you're not from Australia or New Zealand, you may not be aware of this brand, uh, but they trade exclusively at Kmart in Australia and New Zealand. Um, they're a very, very cheap sort of like name brand, like drugstore name brand, I mean, uh, cosmetic, uh, similar to BYS, if anyone is familiar with BYS. Um, and I have not found one product from OXX that I like. I have tried pretty much everything from their range. I've looked at a lot of YouTubers videos on the range. The consensus seems to be that none of the products are, you know, great quality. Um, some of them for the price are okay. Things like blush. I mean, no matter what brand you buy, most blushes are more than fine. Um, there's problems in terms of there's not foundations that are light enough and foundations that are dark enough. They seem to just cater for the middle range, um, yellow toned people, um, not people with, you know, pink undertones and things like that, or people with paler skin or darker skin, which is a big problem, especially if you're being sold at Kmart around the country. Um, you know, Australia is quite a multicultural place. There's a lot of different skin tones and colors. I think it's appropriate to um, you know, include everyone in that. So that's all the beauty brands I support and don't support. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.